Rolex takes legal action against a children's clock manufacturer. Elise Nardine introduces the Diver X skeleton in white. And what in the world is a world time watch? Good morning. Today is Thursday, January 26, 2023. With me today, I have Marco Ferrante, watch expert at Luxury Bazaar. <laughs> Thanks for the intro. I don't know if I'm a watch expert on the level of Roman, but I certainly appreciate You're it. You're getting there very quickly. Let's start with the first story. Rolex sues a children's clock ma maker. Have you heard about this? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting story in that, so not known to many people, Rolex is a charitable trust. So they'll actually fund a lot of initiatives, uh, even though they'll, they'll, for example, give people uh, college sponsorships, things of that nature to promote kind of watchmaking within Switzerland itself. So it's, it's kind of a little bit shocking that they would go after a kind of children's company looking to promote watches and watchmaking. Correct. It just, it, it doesn't make sense, right? That the whole idea, the whole premise behind Rolex being a charitable trust is to up, uh, promote essentially oh. these, these organizations and they're doing the complete opposite. So the whole thing is funny. The clock manufacturer's name is Oyster and Pop. And Rolex is suggesting that there could be some confusion between this children's clock maker and their trademark. Is this a, a possibility, given what this clock looks like? I mean, again, we're talking about a very niche organization in Oyster and Pop versus Rolex, which is, you know, the biggest watch brand in the world. One of the biggest luxury brands in the world. I mean, the idea that they would ever get conflated is, I mean, it's just nonsensical, really. It really is crazy. And I really hope Rolex dropped this. There is a petition that people are signing to request them to, to drop this whole lawsuit. Yeah, it just makes sense. Yeah. Let's move on to the next topic. Elisa Nardine introduces a Diver X Skeleton White. Have you seen this thing? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it now. Honestly, it looks like a great summer watch, something that's very easy to wear, very versatile. Again, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if Ulysses Nardin gets the respect that it deserves, but I certainly think these kind of designs will help them get out to the mass market for sure. So this is a 40 film, 44 millimeter uh, Diver X skeleton white made from sandblasted and satin finished titanium. The dial side or the front of the new Diver X skeleton is marked with a large X and shades of gray. The hour markers and hands are filled with super luminova. I think the main issue, honestly, Avi, is the price. Uh, and that's something that a lot of people will say about Ulysse Nardin is, is the price is just way too high. I mean, we're talking about almost $30,000 retail for yeah. this watch. The, the market you're going after is just far too competitive. At this price, I think it needs to honestly be chopped probably by about 30% at retail so that it doesn't trade basically at about 70, 60, 60 to, to 50 off MSRP. It's funny. This watch really reminds me of like something that you would see like an X-Man wearing just yeah. because of that large X. Yeah. You know, what like other storm, you know yeah. storm? Oh, that'd be perfect yeah, for her. Perfect, yeah. It's white, it's got an X on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is actually great. What complications does it have on there? Can you I think it's it just, looks like a GMT? I no? think it's actually just time only with a skeleton kind of dial. I don't know if it has any complications. What's with that? Oh, I guess the bezel is just for date. the Yeah, the, it's just a diving yeah. bezel. Yep. Okay. So yeah, it's priced at twenty nine thousand one hundred and thirty US dollars or twenty six thousand eight hundred euros. Um, not really sure how many of these are coming out. It is a really cool look looking watch. We'll see what happens. Next question of the day. What in the world is a world time watch? Actually, that's a great question. So world time was actually invented in the early 1930s by a watchmaker by the name of Louis Cotier. Now it's known to many people that Patek Philippe was the first to actually feature in a wristwatch, but what's not known by many people is the first person or the first brand rather to adopt the system was Vacheron Constantin, actually also in the early 1930s, but they did it in a pocket watch as opposed to a wristwatch. So okay. VC was the first to do it in a pocket watch, Patek first in, uh, in a wristwatch. And essentially what it does is it allows you to track 24 distinct time zones at once, right? So essentially from the hour hand, it tells the local time. And then from there, you can just kind of judge based off of the positioning of where the world time indicators of each city is, uh, what the local time is at that time. It looks very difficult to tell the time. It's actually super easy because there's a disc, a 24 hour disc okay. that will correspond exactly to the local time city, the hour. And then the minutes are the exact same in any of the local times okay. uh, actually listed. Let's talk about a couple of notable models of, this, of the world time. First one we have is the Patek Philippe 5231. Yeah, 5231 is a classic. At this point, it's now been discontinued. Actually, this dial was made by a specific dial maker at Patek Philippe. She's now retired now, but she was a master enamel maker. And the failure rate on these was insane. I mean, we're talking about a, a dial that was fired over 20 times and any imperfection would mean that the dial, at, at any point in the process, would mean the dial would just be thrown out and would need to be redone. So this is an absolute masterclass, not just in terms of watchmaking, but in terms of also enamel making and the artistry of it is just- It is beautiful. 
Next one we have is the Vacheron Constantine Overseas World Time. Yeah, I mean, you, you combine complication with a sporty case. I think this is a no-brainer for anybody who's looking for something that is a great travel watch. I mean, this right here, you get three three straps, three different watches, essentially, because you can yeah. change out the bracelet and the World Time complication. I absolutely love this. It is a beautiful-looking watch. I think I would probably wear this even though I don't travel internationally as often as I'd like. <laughs> the Jaeger... Polaris Chronograph WT. What's a W? Uh, World time. World time. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of uh, honestly, I I can't think of a more respected watchmaker in terms of JLC, the pedigree that they have, known as the watchmakers watchmaker, creating a world time and a complication for the price that is just you know astronomically low. The value that you get is insane, right? If you go to Patek Philippe, for example, for a Chronograph World Time 5930 or the new 5935, I mean you're talking about in excess at least of a fifty thousand dollar watch. These are typically going to sell in the sub $15,000 range. So, wow. I mean, the value for money that you get is insane, right? It's definitely not as cool looking as the previous ones. I mean, it doesn't I mean, have that whole, you know, yeah. so much going on on the dial as the, as the other models that we just looked at. I think the main thing that JLC is lacking to really take it to that next level and produce watches for the kind of broader mass market as opposed to now what they're known as, which is a much more niche brand, is really their designs. I think they have yeah. all the merits in terms of the watchmaking, but some of their designs are lacking. So completely agree with you. And the final one we have is the Omega Aquaterra World Timer. This is a cool looking watch. God, it's such a pretty watch. I yeah. absolutely love this. I think the one drawback of this watch is the proportion. It's a little bit thick, a little bit big in terms of its case diameter. But if they were to scale that down just a little bit, I think this would be an absolute hit. I mean, if you're not, it already is, but I think it would sorry, be even if you don't, If you're not watching this and you're listening to this, can you give me an explanation of what this looks like? Yeah, so uh, the dial is actually, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, 3D printed. But the oh. effect that it has is just absolutely, I, I got to see this in person. The effect is really, really nice. You would never tell that it's like a 3D printed or I, I can't remember exactly the process, but it's some kind of printing process where the dial is created. And again, you get a world time complication. I'm pretty sure these trades sub $10,000. So we're uh, talking about value. I mean, again, Omega being one of the most form, you know, foremost and well-known yeah. brands in the world in an Aquaterra case, super sporty, very versatile to watch great looking all right that's it for our episode today if you like the content if you want more of this if you want a daily episode talking about what's going on in the watch market what's going on with pricing trends and new releases make sure to follow make sure to subscribe make sure to comment let us know that you like this and you want more of this we'll see you guys next time <laughs>